uh, by authorizing this project construction later this year, uh, we don't have to spend money uh, continuing to fill these particular cracks. Patching the cracks, uh, which we had an extensive crack patching program uh, from 2007, with it, and it kind of peaked in 2009. We had several reports to you, especially with the 2009 activity. Well, this crack patching uh, does not uh, resolve the problem. The underlying problem is the pore pressure that's in that way. Uh, what the cracks do is it's a band-aid, literally a band-aid, that lets us keep the facility and has kept the facility in service. This reservoir is a critical part of your regional water supply system and it needs to be reliable for the long term. Uh, so the Band-Aids have kept us in service while we formulated a plan for a long-term fix, but the Band-Aids themselves are really not uh, the long-term fix that we need. This particular picture uh, that Brandon took for us last week is an example of a uh, former, uh, previously fixed, you know, routed, uh, specific, routed crack that uh, opened up, is opening up again on us. Uh, the Kiewit proposal uh, addresses this in a long-term fashion by removing that soil wedge in its entirely, entirely and reincorporating it into the embankment. Uh, it removes and reclaims the existing flat plate soil cement also and incorporates it into the new project. It removes the existing geomembrane, adds embankment fill, an extensive rock drainage system throughout the entire embankment, a new geomembrane, and finishes with a 12% cement content stair-step configuration. Adding capacity of this facility while we do the fix is still a sound decision. It's consistent with your goals of sustainability and reliability. It's permittable with minimal environmental impacts at the existing site. It helps us have greater drought resistance by using that bank account, putting more money in that bank account to let us use it longer uh, during periods of need. It is, makes us as an agency less vulnerable to exceeding the groundwater permits limits that we have. And really, it's an opportunity that presents itself with this project. It doesn't present itself at some other time. It's $66 million now to increase the capacity of this facility or go to a greenfield site at some point in the future to add a new facility at $200 to $300 million later. So that is a summary of the type of recommendations that were brought to you last summer when you adopted by resolution both fixing and expanding the facility. Where are we on the project right now on design and permitting? Uh, we are in the process, our permit application has been submitted to FDEP. Uh, it was uh, sent in in November. We had a series of 58 questions asked of us uh, back, in, um, back in December, and we, the response to those 58 questions is contained in the documents that are on the table. Uh, this is about 2,500 pages of response. Uh, this is a substantial effort to address all of the questions that the Bureau of Mining and Minerals Regulation has of us. And they've been asking questions, all sorts of them, about geology, about details of the design, about the monitoring system, and about our agency's intention to have a long-term successful operation of this facility. Uh, they are uh, due to respond to this, these documents that we submitted. Uh, we're due to get that response from them April 19th, later this week. Uh, the other major permit for this project is one that we obtained from Hillsborough County Board of Commissioners, and that is the land use and transportation permit that was submitted also in mid-March. And the, there are, I understand, eight different departments at Hillsborough County that are part of that permit review team. Uh, we've gotten a positive response already on the site development permit part of this. The other seven responses are expected later this week from the county. And then finally, the other activity uh, that we're uh, working on is the 2012 Revenue Bond Team has been convened. That's being uh, managed by Christina Sackett at the General Manager's Direction. And there will be a recommendation brought to you in the form of a bond resolution at your June board meeting. Uh, in another effort, that is uh, Paula Dye uh, working through your General Manager. Uh, you have authorized an uh, application for co-funding for that capacity increase not for the repair, but for the capacity increase part of this job. And in December, uh, the staff submitted a co-funding request for $33 million, or half of that $66 million cost to increase the facility. In April, uh, just earlier this month, the funding subcommittee uh, took action by deferring to the full governing board for having a broader discussion of this. And next month, the governing board decision uh, should come back to you on whether they will consider co-funding uh, their part of the expansion for this project. 
Uh, the next steps then are coming to you in June uh, where we will ask you to consider a bond resolution. Uh, we will update you as required on the permitting status. We'll either be getting uh, some additional questions from the permit agencies uh, or we will have a, a determination that our permit application is complete and we should have a decision on the SWIFT uh, co-funding uh, for information for you in, at your June board meeting. Uh, the plan uh, is we are still on schedule to start construction this fall. Uh, this is a 26 uh, construction, a 26 month construction project and we would be uh, finishing that construction in fall of 2014.